Hello, hello, hello. What is going on, everyone? This is Peter Hong, your English speaking teacher dash tutor, whatever you want to call it. Anyways, um, this podcast we're gonna be exploring the idea. We're gonna dive into the idea of improving your English skills. Now, as someone who has struggled with this in the past, because I Was an immigrant from another country that didn't really speak English. I know all the odds and ends to learning a language that seems completely new. Seems that like that it's a whole nother,、um, uh, you know, universe. Seems like something that is so difficult to grasp. So I know all that, right? And Um, throughout the years, I've learned ways to improve it, and to the point where now,、uh, people basically say, "Oh yeah, your English is basically you know perfect, it's just like any American, you know. You might have some accents here and there, you know, whatever. You might say some weird things, you know, <laughs> but you know, it's perfectly understandable." So. I have to thank right. I have to thank my elementary school teacher for for basically helping me with learning English to jump starting it. You know, going over the hump, as you will say.、Um, her name is Mrs. Hell. And so here's the thing, right?、Um, and obviously, you know, when when you're young, you know. Language is way easier because you don't. You're not thinking about all this other stuff. You're not thinking about paying the bills. You're not thinking about, you know, when should I get married. You're not thinking about, you know, who's gonna win the NBA finals. You're not thinking of any of that. All you're thinking about is, how do I have fun? You know, when do I get some popsicle sticks? You know, uh, uh, uh when's the new video game coming out? You know, that's all you're thinking about, right? So when you're young. Your brain is still developing, right?、Uh, the the it's it's pretty empty, you know. Let's say it, it, it's it holds fifty gallons of information per se, right? Um um, and so far you're you're you only have maybe one gallon, right? So you have a lot of space to put in information, right? So whatever you learn, it gets easy. It becomes easy for you to put it in, right? So. That's why you know. That's why learning a language when you're young is very useful. So I had the privilege of that because I started learning English when I was eight. So, anyways, back to the story of my teacher.、Um, we had an interesting, a very interesting system in our school, and so what happens is、um, all the students they. Have a points system, right? You earn points through、uh, different things that you did, whether it be you know reading books, and then you take the AR test, like you take a computerized test、um, that will ask you questions about the books. So let's say you read Harry Potter, right? After you finish Harry Potter, you take the test, the AR test. It will ask you, you know,、um, how come Harry wasn't killed? When Lord Voldemort cast the Agamemnon spell, right? How come he didn't really die? And then you have, you know, four, four multiple choice answers you can select, and one of them would be the correct one, right? So, and if you score a high score on that, then you earn the、uh, AR points, and the more AR points you get, the more rewards points you get. And what happens when you have a lot of these rewards points is that at the end of the semester, right, there will be a big table in the middle of the room, and it will be full of toys, of coloring pencils, of markers, of stickers, of anything you would want as a little kid, right? You might have coupons to, you know, Pizza Hut or something. And what you would do, what they did was,、uh, they auctioned the things at the table. So、uh, 
um, they'll go one by one and they'll say, okay, we got this uh, action figure of, I don't know, Buzz Lightyear from Toy Story 3, you know, the, the spaceship guy, you know. Who wants it? You know, everyone be like, okay, I want it. You know, 100 points. Oh, no, I want it. I got 500 points. No, I want it. I got a thousand points. This is my for my boyfriend, right? So you got like a lot of people, you know, wanting something, and they're willing to use their hard-earned points to, you know, to basically bid for whatever item they want. And it's very interesting because at a young age, what it basically taught us is kind of you know hard work. In a little bit of you know the 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 auctioneering things you know because let's say let's say I got like twenty thousand points because you know I'd be reading them books when I was young right I'd be doing them homework when I was young you know what I'm saying so I had a lot of points right I was probably <clears throat> top top three in points right so I had a lot of points right and I wanted I wanted I needed them toys right so. I knew you okay. I got a lot of points, right? And I'll scan the table. I'll scan the table and I'll look at okay, what things do I absolutely must have? What things look so badass that if I get it, oh, woo, you know what I'm saying? So I will look, right? I will scout out. Let's say there's like two or three things that I re- would really want, and I'll look around. And look at the evil little faces of other kids. And I'll be like, okay, what things might they want? And I'll kind of calculate, you know, to see what are the chances of me getting some items. And if if it's an item that, you know, maybe no one wants, I'll maybe blow like 1% of my points to get it. Because, hey, I can get it for cheap. And it is something that I will get for sure. Right, so that's what I did. And... Um, this pretty much gave me the incentive, gave me the purpose of learning English. And what my teacher also did um, was, let's say, if uh, you know, she she was talking about uh, seashells, right? I don't know what seashells are, but she would, for some reason, have a seashell in a drawer somewhere, and she would go grab it. And be like, okay, this is a she seal, sea seal, sea seal. Okay, so boom, I would know what it is. So that was also the first time that I realized, okay, when you're learning a new language, the 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 idea is easier to grasp when it is something you can see, it is something you can touch, it is something you can uh, uh, process. It's right in front of you, right? So this is very important, very, very important. So you know, as I progress through the years, you know, keep in mind when I arrived in America, I had no English speaking skills. The only thing I knew how to say probably was yes, hi, hello, no, you know, my name Peter. That's it. Um, so you know. Maybe my first year, I would uh, 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 finally know how to at least say hi, what's your name? You know, uh, the second year, I began to, uh, uh, end of second year, I could communicate with little kids, uh, you know, chat, you know, no problem. Third year, I would say, I, I was able to uh, start reading and understanding books. And, uh, you know, I could, I, I, I slowly caught up to the same vocab level as the uh, American kids. And maybe the fourth year, I started learning, you know, how to write, how to write in English. And it, you know, just kept going, going, improving, improving, right? So, you know, even as a young kid, it, it, it took a lot of time, right, to learn something. That's why it's, that's why some, you know, Learning a new language is definitely not easy, and you know, even though I was a you know a pretty smart kid, right? Uh, one thing that I always sucked at was um, writing. 
writing essays, and it 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 just sucked. I hated writing essays. I mean, who the hell likes writing essays, right? You know, you have the introduction, you have the uh, make sure your sentences doesn't start with the same word, and then when you're talking about something that you don't even care about, and then you need to uh, uh uh oh you know you're running out of time, you gotta have the conclusion, right? So I was always um. I was always not as good in writing. So let's say I was in the uh, the smartest group of kids at the school, right? I mean, not to brag or anything, but again, I'm, I'm, I think I'm kind of smart. <laughs> um, <laughs> so even though I was in the the highest group, right, of the uh, the the students, this I guess the smarter, more academic achieving students. You know my English writing, and you know whether it be reading, whatever, it was not as good as the average, below average amongst those groups. But I would say my um, if I was to compare my you know writing skills to the average American student, then I would say it's probably the same or a little better. So, but I I struggle with that, and it's it's super hard. Um, Anyways, so at some point, I I kind of hit a wall. You know, I've reached a limit in terms of how good I can improve my、uh, English, right? And it was fine because it was that limit was way past of what I needed to,、uh, you know, to succeed in the world to talk without you know any problems with people. So it was it was fine, you know. It was enough to score what I needed on the ACT test. Yeah, it was all good, right? And then, and then, I、uh, I found something that really improved my English, and that would be rapping, right? So you would think, why would Listening to rap music improve your English. Well, for me, what it did was、um, I had to learn how to pronunciate words. I had to learn how to read the rap lyrics that I wrote. You know, fast enough while I was recording my own music, and then. To、uh, rap it as I was reading, and it was fast. It was it was you know B the blah 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 you know, and that basically helped me improve very much. And so that that helped me in the speaking area, right? And you know I have to thank Eminem for that. Not the candy, but the white guy. The you know, um, uh, uh, my arms sweaty, knees weak, arms are heavy. The sweat on his mom's spaghetti. I probably messed that up, but you know what I mean, right? So that's uh, that's what helped with my speaking, but it also helped me dramatically with listening, because when you have to listen to songs, especially rap songs, there are a lot of li-、uh, lyrics, right? And it comes at you really fast. And if you want to understand what they're saying, then you have to process that information really fast, right? You have to hear that information and try to understand what they're saying and the words that you know they speak, they spoke about, they rapped. So, the more and more I did that, I began to realize that my listening skills were super sharp. Super, super sharp.、Um, and the more you know, videos, the more movies that I watched,、uh, I could understand what they were talking about word for word. And you know, I didn't even need subtitles. You know, I would I would be able to understand exactly what they were talking about.、Um, if they were speaking like really fast, I would also understand. And so I began to realize, okay. I think this is something that you know, 
I'm pretty good at. Like my ear is super super sharp. So. So okay, and then I you know I went went back to Taiwan where I was born to uh, uh, study in a university for four years, and I had to you know. Uh, I had to relearn Chinese because what had happened was I spent you know eleven twelve years in the states in the United States, and I completely stopped using Chinese like completely even at home, so all that space was replaced with English, with English speaking, with English listening, right? So that's why when I went back, I had to relearn Chinese. And when I was back in Taiwan, right? You know, I had I had friends, I had friends that uh, uh, that you know asked me about you know helping with their English because whether they wanted to study uh you know overseas in the United States, you know they they know that they had to improve their English, right? And one of the major things was uh, uh, TOEFL, TOEFL speaking. N- now, what is this TOEFL test, right? It it kind of sounds like tofu, you know, something you eat, but it's not. I have to drink some water because my throat's getting kind of dry, you know, and my nose is getting blocked up, but whatever. We're still going to push through. So they had to take this test in order to get accepted into universities, into the programs that they wanted to attend in the States to further their career or to uh, I- I- improve the, the chances, the likability, the probability of them getting you know, further on with the careers, expanding their possibilities, basically. So I was like, okay, yeah, let's do it. You know, I got tired of, you know, not having people to speak English with. I got tired of, you know, not understanding all these weird jokes that people were, uh, you know, talking about in Chinese, whether they be talking you know, crap about me, but, you know, I knew when people were talking crap about me because I know how to read body language, and, you know, I, the first couple words I learned in Chinese was definitely in the cuss words, so if anyone used that word and added me, then I knew, all right, I gotta roll my sleeves up, and I gotta, you know, I gotta pop, pop, pop. You know what I'm saying? Like, because I don't deal with that, you know. If you want to talk crap, you better be able to handle what comes after. You know what I'm saying? So, so, anyways, um, I got tired of that. So, it was, it was, it was definitely good for me to speak with people who wanted to, you know, improve their English because, you know, we had common ground, right? So I looked into what this uh, uh, TOEFL test was, and boy, did it suck. It sucked. Really, really badly, right? There's a reason why they needed someone like myself to help them with it. Because even as a native speaker, the type of questions that they ask you and the way that you have to respond it's insane. It's crazy, right? So they'll ask you, you know, which movie do you think is the better one? Please explain the reasoning as to why you thought the other was better. So um, it would be, you know, Aquaman versus uh, uh, Avengers Infinity War. Okay. And you got 15 seconds to prepare, to think of, uh, 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 you know. And then you got 45 seconds to spit your bars. 
<laughs> no, to to basically tell them why you think one movie is better. And uh, normal people don't talk this way. No, normal people don't be like, "Hey, dude, how's it going?" Okay, you got fifty seconds to think about. How your day was, and then forty five seconds to respond. Okay, your time's up. Go. Oh, hello. I'm 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 very good. Um, today I went to the grocery store and I bought like a lot of chicken because I want to fry some chicken because I'm pretty hungry and I watched this video online on how to cook chicken and I want to do it myself. Like no, no one talks like that. All right. No one talks like that, so it is a weird format, you know. Even for native people, and as someone who is very good at just talking BS, right? Like I'm talking to this mic right now, like without ever even thinking of anything ahead. I'm just blabbering on. I'm just going by the flow of the ocean as it goes, you know. Even someone like me, I had a difficult time in responding in a timely manner to score a high point. So, imagine someone who doesn't even come close to being a native speaker. How are they gonna do it? How are they gonna prevent themselves from just sitting there and just uh 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 uh. uh, uh you know, how? It was very hard, very very hard. So, you know, I I realized there was a big demand, and then the more I looked into it, um, especially kind of uh, 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 seeing interactions with other people, I began to notice something. Most of the time, when People would talk. So let's say let's let's say I had a friend, right? I had a friend, Billy, or not Billy. Billy's not a an ABC or a Chinese people wouldn't pick a name Billy. Uh, let's say um, uh, let's do uh, uh, shoot. I don't want to use the the same name. I don't want to, you know, break the comfort the the comfort did the the ah uh, uh, shoot the confidentiality, right? Um. Let's just say, um, what's a good name? Come on, you gotta think of a good name. Okay, let's just say David, right? David is with me, and we went to a store to buy some food, right? To buy, let's say, to buy some candy and popcorn. And David takes. Whatever he wanted to buy, up to the register, and the lady was like, "Hey, would you like to try one of our specials today? It will only be five ninety nine extra. Usually, it would be ten ninety nine without the special, or something like that, right?" And David just looks at her like, "What? What did you say?" And keep in mind, David, when he went up to the counter, the first word that he spoke is just weird, because his English pretty much sucked, right? I'm sorry, David, but your English sucked. But that's why we're we're gonna improve it, okay? <laughs> so if you have any clue at all, I mean. You're looking at this Asian guy, right? And you, you hear him talk. You should be able to make the assumption, like, all right, this guy's English is not very good. He probably came from foreign country, right? And so he might not know all the things that I'm saying. He might not know all the vocab that I'm saying. So if I want to communicate with him, if I want him to understand what I'm saying, right? I would talk in a slower way 
and use easy words so that he can understand. Right, but but that never happens. That never ever happens. I've never seen people try to talk with them in an easier way. Never. They might be good teachers. They might have good intentions, but they never do that. I do not know why, but they just don't do it. So. They might try to explain, like they might say, "Oh, have you ever been to the Grand Canyon?" And David doesn't know what the Grand Canyon is, and then they'll say, "Oh, you know, that got by, uh, that got, you know, it's a place. There are a lot of、uh, deep canyons that,、uh, you know, that、uh, that been carved out through time and、uh, erosion happening, and you know, it's a very dry area, like a desert, and." You know, no, that they, they he still won't understand that really, but for me, I know. Okay, I I should say a place that has big rocks, right? Big rocks. That's it. That's all you gotta say. Big rocks, deep, tall. Okay, if he understands that, okay, I can, I can. You know, use harder words. Then hopefully, maybe he'll understand fully. You know, but no. A lot of times, these people, while they're trying to explain what they're trying to explain, the words that they use and the methods that they use are too difficult for that person to even understand, right? So that was a big problem that I realized, and I realized that me, I was good at helping with that. So let's let's go on another story tangent as to why I think I'm pretty good for helping people with improving their English. So I went to、uh, college, university for one year in America before I went back to、uh, study in Taiwan. And at my school, it was a fairly small school. We had、uh, foreign exchange students, like every school does have, right? And we had a a huge group of Brazilians that would come study here. And、um, I lived in dorms, you know, in the school、uh, dormitories, you know, the the housing that was provided by the school. And. And in my floor, right, we had you know maybe ten rooms, so maybe twenty guys that lived in that floor. We、uh, we had a Brazilian, and it was on Halloween night, the Halloween night, you know, where you 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 would dress up and scare people, and you know say trick or treat, right, if you're little kids, because you want some candy.、Um, on that night, we were sitting out in the halls. And you know, this guy,、uh, this guy Eddie, right? He was right next to me. And I was just thinking, you know, I'm bored as hell. I was just thinking, man, you know, because I, I I knew he his English wasn't very good, and because he was just like me, you know, when he came, he did not know any English. So I started talking with him, and then blah 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 blah. You know, we became friends. We went to work out together, and then we became like besties. You know, and it was sad that he has to go back to Brazil because we were dope. All right, we were cool, bro. You know, but、uh, you know he he was taking ESL classes, um, basically just classes that are offered. To、uh, international students or foreign exchange students, to、uh, mainly focus on their English, because you know they need that to continue on. So he was taking only English classes the first semester, and but during the same time, he was hanging out with me, right? And we were just talking it up everywhere we went, you know. 
we talk about life, we talk about girls, we talk about, you know, working out, we talk about our future dreams, we talk about our past, whatever, right? And within one semester, within one semester, right? One semester. He was able to talk with other people in English completely by himself, completely independently, and he would have no trouble. Within one semester. Now, I like to contribute some of that to me and my、uh, kind of approach to helping him because. You know, he would ask me, "Oh, why? Why do you know? Why do I say I ran yesterday instead of I run?" And I would explain to him, you know, because, uh, 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 because the verb is something you did in the past, right? Because yesterday is the past. So some words, some verbs like run, because run is a Action, right? It's something you do.、Um, you would change, you know, the vowel sound so that you can differentiate. You can understand. You would know when you did that action. So run is present term, right? And then you would change the u to a a, and it becomes ran because it's something you did in the past. And then you have, you know, words that are in the same group where. You know, uh, 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 that you know, you you change one letter in the beginning, but it's it 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 has the same you know, uh, uh, rule changes. So, you know, I would explain stuff like that to him, and I would talk to him in a slower and easier way that he can understand. When everyone was talking super fast, and he didn't even know what the hell they were talking about, so that's what I did. And can you think about it? Someone who cannot speak English becoming, I guess you would, uh, uh, you would say socially fluent within one semester. Now that's that's pretty good. That is pretty darn good. So I used the same uh, uh process. When I helped my friends and some other clients in Taiwan, and one another advantage that I had was、um, I could explain certain things in Chinese because my Chinese got better throughout the years, right? So I was able to do that. Now it was it was pretty funny because you know the first year I was in Taiwan studying, I had the most time. The most time, and you know, at that point, I had no idea whether I was staying or not because how the hell was I supposed to stay when I couldn't read or write and listen or I didn't know any Chinese. All right, how the heck was I supposed to survive in a school that only uses that, right? So, anyways, at the time, I had a lot of free time, but for some reason. Everyone in my school thought I was, you know, this evil American <laughs> that infiltrated their school, took one of their spots, and you know, they didn't want to talk with me. Either they were too scared, or、uh, you know, they thought I was too ugly. You know, they didn't like what I was doing. Whatever, you know, they wouldn't talk to me, and so. So in the back of my mind, I was thinking, okay, you know, okay, whatever. These people they don't really like me. They don't understand me. Whatever. They didn't want to help me. Anything. And,、um, you know, but thankfully I had my roommate Joy. He was、uh, he's from Malaysia, and his English is pretty darn good, right? He's basically completely fluent in English. And I was able to talk with him, and you know, I had my other roommates like Mats help me out. Uh, do do certain things in the first year, and you know I survived. But 
that was the year I had the most time. And if I was smart enough, I would have uh, tried to to use a lot of that time to help uh, people improve their English. But obviously, at that time, my Chinese wasn't good enough to fully understand everything, and to to realize that I had this opportunity to you know make some make some moolah from it. Anyways, so when it came to the third year, the busiest. Year, I started having people and friends and、uh, just ask me, "Hey, I have this essay in English. Can you help me edit it or look over it?" Hey, I have this、uh, TOEFL test that I need to take. Do you think you can help me prepare for it? You know, hey, I want to improve my English speaking. Do you think you can help me do that? I want a native, you know, speaker to help me with that because. All the other teachers, they kind of suck. So I was like, okay, okay. Even though I'm super busy, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try, right? And it got to the point where, you know, the time and energy I had to give, <clears throat> I had to charge for it because, you know, helping someone learning a new language when they, you know, starting from scratch. And or their their you know their pronunciation is so horrible, it's hard. It's very very hard and very exhausting. And if you're if you have a short temper, you couldn't do it. You really couldn't do it because it's very repetitive. You know when you're trying to correct someone, saying something in a wrong way. And I can totally understand that because it also applied. To me, when someone was trying to teach me Chinese and I didn't know what the heck they were talking about, it's very frustrating. So it took a lot of energy to do that. So eventually, I had to, you know, I had to charge for my services. But you know, if you were like my really good friend, I mean, you know, I just, I just did it, you know, to help. But, <clears throat> but you know. Most of, for the most part, you know, I had to charge something for it. So that's what I started doing, and、um, there were a couple people that、uh, that had to take the TOEFL test, and some of them, oh, that's my phone. Some of them, their their English was pretty bad to start, right? And yet, I was able to help them. Get the scores that they wanted or needed for the TOEFL, and I focused on speaking. And so I was very proud of that. And also,、um, you know, a lot of it falls onto the individual because they studied hard, really hard. They wanted that. They wanted to, you know, improve themselves. They wanted to get into schooling. In U S, because they knew, you know, it their opportunities would expand way more. They would be able, to hopefully, get jobs that they wouldn't have been able to got to, uh, you know, if they stayed in Taiwan, right? And. What's very ironic is that,、um, you know, I was helping them with the speaking section on the test, but、uh, for a lot of people, the 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 section that they improved the most on the TOEFL test, it was actually listening. Now, the reasoning I think behind this was because the time I spent, you know, helping them. A lot of times, I was talking. I was talking a lot <laughs> because I was coming up with um, um, ways to to explain something, to clarify something,、uh, little tips and tricks that they should do in their daily life, advices that they should have, the mindset they should have, and the outlook. That they're gonna have once they get into the states, right? 
And throughout all of that, I ended up talking for the most part. <laughs> I didn't want to because my my voice is would would be dead and I couldn't, you know, make rap songs. So, but I I did it because, you know, I just did it and I guess it worked out well enough because their scores improved drastically. So, anyways, and um so that's that's just a little little background as to uh you know my experiences and some insight you know some uh, uh small information that can um kind of that is revolved that is involved in this whole uh, process and yeah so um i mean we c- eventually i'll uh i'll make more that talk about these stuff but um this is kind of uh, uh introduction as you would say into uh these podcasts right and hopefully what you can do is you know when you're sleeping when you're driving to work and you need some somebody to you know uh uh pleasure your years because you know i have like one of the best voices out there. Actually, my voice is actually pretty damn weird. But, you know, you can listen to this. watch, Listen to me ramble. And hopefully, you can pick up on some, you know, advices, some tips. And if you would like to, you know, for me to help you one-on-one, because you know you feel like you need uh, a more personal um, uh, approach and more uh, focused help with your speaking, then you know you can contact me and we can try and set that up. But yeah, so that's it for this episode, this podcast number one, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. All right, this is Peter signing out. Bye.